All right, Podcasters Roundtable round. I'm just making a blank with my hand. I don't think it's going to be around, but you're probably hearing this in the feed. You should be hearing this in the feed. And, you know, that might be even a fun conversation to have. Maybe on another roundtable where we talk about special episodes or putting stuff in the feed that's not necessarily an episode. I don't know, Daniel, you may have done that before. Uh, but we're doing that here because... I don't have a regular round this week, but I wanted to talk about some changes. And if you look at the title of this Blab, we're doing it on Blab.im today, a service you should definitely check out if you're a podcaster for live streaming. Uh, as fun, but different than Google Hangouts on Air. But I titled this one, iTunes is changing access to your podcast, how to avoid messing it up. And I think over the last six months, we've seen a couple different changes uh, in the access that Apple and iTunes is giving you to them, right? And it started with a support page, changing how they did support. The fact that you can even contact somebody for support at Apple, uh, that's changed over the years. But something they've obviously put work into and put their weight behind and are supporting very publicly. So a new change has come along and this involves uh, how, I guess, access to your show inside iTunes, right? And we got Todd calling in a little bit here. Well, he's calling in a lot. <laughs> and I will I'll give him one more shot. But Daniel, Todd, what's up? Are we better? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So hang out with us for a little while. When you have to go, let us know. So iTunes, again, is giving you a little bit more access and a little bit more control over your show in iTunes. Mm -hmm. And when I say how to avoid messing it up, I'm really talking about from two sides, how to avoid messing up for yourself, damaging your own content in iTunes, your own show, messing up your feed essentially, because there is an option to do that and messing it up for everybody by abusing some of the stuff that they've given us. So I want to dive into that, hopefully a little bit of a resource here to just to catch people up on what's going on and do you know, and if you're going to try and go submit podcast, that is not like the way it's been since like 2000 and five, right? It, it's different for the first time. So Daniel, yeah, go ahead. I think this is great news for all yes. podcasters, not only because of some of the other stuff we'll be talking about, but a couple big things here. One, Linux podcasters. This means you can now submit your own show to iTunes. You don't have to go to the Apple store. You don't have to have a friend submit your show to iTunes because you can submit now through the website instead of having to install the iTunes software. And two, this also means you can submit your podcast through a mobile device, I believe. I haven't actually tested the website on mobile, but being that Apple makes the most popular mobile devices, I would imagine that they've made the website work properly on mobile. So that means you can submit your podcast, which you couldn't submit an RSS feed through the podcast app or through iTunes on a mobile device before. Now you can submit your podcast more easily. So if you're a mobile podcaster, if you're a Linux podcaster, it's now easier to get your podcast listed. Right. And also exciting because anytime we see Apple put more support into podcasts, that's a good thing, I think, right? It shows, you know, more uh, credibility into how they podcast. Just they're caring about it a little bit more. They're doing a little, uh, little cleaning up in the back end. And uh, I think we're seeing all sort of seeing some ripples of that. I know there's been, seems like there's been more iTunes issues with podcasts over the last year than there had been in the past. And maybe that's a result of what looks like to be a lot of changes in the back. But Daniel, let's, I mentioned right at the beginning, or I just mentioned one of the things is if you're going to submit a podcast is different. So before you'd go in your iTunes software on your desktop, so you had to have it, you had to be on a desktop, you had to then go to the iTunes software, which a lot of people don't even want to have and open that up, find the little podcast and then the podcast section. Click submit a podcast. By the way, Apple, you screwed up my whole tutorial video. I got to do it all over. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does. Everyone does. And, and then that actually bumps you out to another site. So where does the submit a podcast button take you to, Daniel, when you click that from iTunes? To this new thing that is called Podcasts Connect. I have to emphasize the S in there. Now, but doesn't it re? Isn't that a redirect? What does it say then in the URL once you get there? 
yeah, podcastconnect.apple.com is what it's showing me now. Now, I've sometimes seen it go to itunesconnect.apple.com, right. or that might even be the login portal, which iTunes Connect has been around for a while. If you're an iOS developer, you're very familiar with iTunes Connect. And I've, I've always kind of wondered, why can't they bring iTunes Connect to podcasters? And it looks like they're starting maybe this is all theorization or really hypothesis yeah we have no inside information well maybe todd does but i you know he knows a little bit more maybe todd you've been you've been actually using this portal for a long time right well actually the developer or the partner portal is completely different than the podcast connect portal this is completely new even to us but the the big thing here is the um I think what they're really trying to do, and I don't want to get too far ahead of the horse here, cart off in front of the horse, is that they saw what Google did and was, you know, bringing on Google Play where you're going to have your own portal. And I think they kind of had to say, oh, maybe we need to do something. All right. And and it, the, sorry, Todd. I would barely hear you. So I'm trying to short I answers. Think, <laughs> I think support was having trouble too. Yeah. Think, trouble how? And keeping up. I think mm -hmm. they're having trouble keeping up with support. Awesome. Yeah, you, you look at uh, the podcasting communities out there, and I try to participate in as many as I can. Well, like Reddit, Facebook, Google+, um, all of these different places. And the common things that you'll see people have issues with in iTunes. One, problems refreshing their feed. Two, unknown reasons why their podcast disappeared in iTunes. Um, three, maybe some title problems uh, due to what they're using to create their RSS feed. Um, and four, they can't, re they can't change their feed URL, which I know we'll talk more about later because there's a big caution there, but we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, so we were saying you go to this Podcasts Connect. <laughs> if you go to Podcasts Connect, you're at the wrong site. You're at that dude's site. Over there, I think. <laughs> and so um, when you get there, what are, and you log in, you log in with your Apple ID, right? Mm -hmm. Which is something you already have. If you've submitted a podcast already, you might need to create one. Uh, and then you get some options. Like, what do you see? Now, uh, as a reminder, I talked about clicking the link from iTunes uh, to get to this. Done. You don't have to go on iTunes anymore. If you go to podcasts, with an S, connect.com, it'll take you on the web. And that's one of the reasons uh, Daniel's talking about Linux having access, right? You just go to a browser, put that in, and you can get in. You log in with your Apple ID, and again, you have some options. So what do you see? And I'm not sure everybody's seeing the same thing. Well, it uh, not seeing the same thing in what sense? Like the Well, I won't go into my own issues, but I don't I don't even see a couple of my podcasts. So it shows you all the podcasts you've submitted in theory, right? Since, since you've had that account, correct? Yeah, in theory. And um, it might be something more based on how recently you submitted the podcast. For example, uh, I don't see any of my own podcasts in this. Although that's, that's going to be different for me because I just realized I have access to Apple's partner portal. So it makes sense that I wouldn't see any of my podcasts. I do see uh, my first, one of my first ever podcasts was listed in here as deleted. Yes. And that was amazing that I could still see, wow, it's still there. So I could easily uh, get information a little bit. Mine too. And I realized... Oh, that's gone, I guess, from iTunes. That's gone. It's, which makes sense because even uh, the account that was holding the media doesn't have it. So aside from our own issues, I mean, like I said, that's why I kind of feel like people are seeing different things. And I, it feels a little glitchy, like they're still working on it in real time. Um, but what, does, what do most people see? Uh, what options are we getting supposed to get? The list of your podcasts that you have submitted to iTunes with this Apple ID. Uh, an ability to add a new podcast. And for each individual podcast, the options that I see, refresh feed, view an iTunes store, hide podcast, delete podcast. You see a mirror URL. You see the feed URL for your podcast. You see status, uh, and there could be multiple uh, statuses. And you see last refresh. Right. And so 
number let, let's address the not messing up <laughs> the title of, of this one uh, not messing up or, or how to avoid messing up those two things I talked about let's talk about your podcast first of all prominent in there and I, it's not you have access to the feed URL right right that is a field that you can change and you want to be careful <laughs> that you don't just go crazy and change it hey the other day I went I was on um, uh, generic hosting site.com. And I said, I want to be on Blueberry because way better, far better. And so I want to make that move. I'm just going to put in my new Blueberry RSS right into that URL and boom, I'm done, right? I've transferred my podcast in iTunes. No. That's not right. <laughs> That's uh, going to cost you some audience. Yeah. And why? So Todd says it's going to cost us some audience. Daniel, what's the problem with that? It's, this is not changing the feed for your existing subscribers. I was going to ask, what's the point of, why do we get access to this? Well, the good use for this, and probably the reason that Apple gave us this ability is so that Apple has to do less work. They are getting so many requests and they've tried to switch to the ticket system for support to handle the requests better. They have a small team and there are now so many podcasters, many of them, asking for too much help from Apple. Please stop bugging Apple about your problems. Bug one of us about your problems. We're here to help you. But um, so I think this is, the Apple put it there so that we could do this if we absolutely had to, but it's not a good idea because it's not actually changing it for your subscribers. It's changing it for iTunes. So this would be, let's say you go to generic horrible, stinky, bad podcast host.com and you host your podcast with them. You used their RSS feed and you want to leave them and they say, nope, sorry, we don't do 301 redirects. We don't redirect your feed. We don't let you put an RSS tag in your feed to redirect everybody. We're holding your feed hostage. Your power that you have left available to you is you could put out a final episode and say, hey, everybody, I have to change my RSS feed. I can't make it so you automatically redirect. So please go back to iTunes and resubscribe. But before you do that, you would go into this portal, uh, this podcast connect, and you would set that feed to your new feed so that when someone resubscribes to iTunes, they'll subscribe to your new feed. But remember, this is not changing what your existing subscribers get. This changes right, only what new subscribers get. Right. And so let's clarify. I, I bet a lot of people don't understand the process, right? So they think iTunes has my feed URL. People have subscribed to it. Now they're just going to see the new one. Really quick, what's the pro when I subscribe to your show on iTunes, why do I not? Why? What happens? And why am I not just going to see the new URL and just get transferred over? You end up being subscribed directly to my RSS feed. Right. You're not going through iTunes. iTunes sees that you subscribe to it, especially if you click that subscribe button in the iTunes store, but you're subscribed directly to me. So if the iTunes store changes, if my podcast is removed from iTunes, you're still subscribed to my podcast and you'll still receive episodes regardless of the iTunes catalog. Right. So that's important. I think people miss the, probably miss the connection. Unless you do this, unless you do this regularly, it's hard to kind of put the pieces together. Like what happens when people go to iTunes, they subscribe and then you change your URL. So you need to be careful. If you need to move your feed, get in touch with one of us or someone in the podcast community who knows what the heck they're doing. I'm already seeing bad advice. Literally uh, in, in forums already, people say, just change, just change your feed, man. <laughs> I was like, no, stop. And people are trying to attack this. Uh, seen lips and puts out some, stuff, out some stuff. When you go in back your WordPress, the Blueberry plugin gives you great information about, hey, this has changed. Watch out for this, et cetera. You, you know, the scary thing about this too is, is that those of you that did not have your feed submit, you know, a third party submitted your feed, you're locked out. So, you know, there are services out there that are hosting, uh, you know, big hosting companies today use one email address to submit literally thousands of feeds. So people are really, they have no access to their content because they're truly held hostage. So they're going to have to go through extra hoops to even make the change as it is. So there's, again, a large number of shows that they will not have access to their feed just because their hosting provider submitted their feed to iTunes. Literally right. thousands. 
Yeah, and some of those companies, uh, Todd, because of his position, may not want to name certain companies. I will name one because I've been playing with their RSS feed and uh, discovered the same thing in the settings. SoundCloud is one of these companies that by default, now you can't change this, but by default, they'll put their email address in your RSS feed instead of your email address. So if iTunes has problems with your RSS feed, they'll email SoundCloud, a generic email address at SoundCloud. You don't receive that email if uh, your podcast is rejected from iTunes or if it's accepted in the first place. Or even these announcements, like the announcement we got for Podcasts Connect being launched, if you didn't receive that, then you need to check your RSS feed. Look under the iTunes owner tag in your RSS feed. You don't have to know what everything else is doing. Just search for even just search for the at sign to find an email address near the top of your RSS feed. When you're looking at that technical data, find out what email address is inside of there. And if you don't have access to that, then you could lose control of your podcast. And congrats. You're now swimming your way through a sea of code. It looks like, <laughs> and uh, you'll realize what staring at that stuff uh, all day is, is like, it's not fun. I hate digging through HTML code, but it's in there. So look for those tags. What else do we get? Um, you know, people are saying, oh my gosh, we get control and iTunes and access. And yeah, sort of. We get a few things. It, it's a step forward. Uh, we don't get everything. What else on that list of things that you you listed off? Um, well, let, let's talk about the other one. So that was the one. Don't screw up. Don't change your feed. Go crazy and lose your subscribers. Don't mess it up for everybody else. There is actual warning in there, right? There's a feature to refresh, to basically ping your feed to update it, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us about that one. Daniel. Well, uh, if you release a new episode, your feed should refresh automatically in iTunes. And it's actually a, a learning system that it learns approximately when yeah. you release a new episode and it looks, it expects a new episode around that time. And so it will refresh more frequently around that time. And I see iTunes sometimes refresh very quickly. I was playing with the latest version of PowerPress recently and my listing in iTunes refreshed in, I think, 15 minutes. And that was not only the latest episode, but my description in iTunes had refreshed within 15 minutes. Right. And I didn't press this refresh button. And but people freak out all the time. We get emails like, I changed stuff, and where is it? And they don't understand the difference between making changes and showing up in iTunes. So what does hitting that refresh? And there's a warning there. It says they'll take it away if people abuse it, essentially, right? Actually, I Does don't see a warning. I, thought, I swear I saw that warning somewhere. Here, anyway, I'm, I'm going to click it and see. Yes, if you click it, okay. I believe. It says yep. uh, refresh and it asks for confirmation. Allow up to 24 hours for the change to appear on the iTunes store and it gives me cancel or refresh. There's no warning. The thing is, hmm. allow up to 24 hours. <laughs> I almost have to wonder, does this button do anything? <laughs> because... Yeah. That's about how long we tell people give it 24 hours anyway. Yeah, they make it sound like it's an instant press update thing. And then it says, wait 24 hours. I did see whether I heard it on uh, Lipson's The Feed or whether it's in there. I swear I saw it. But it says something about, you know, if you, if you use this for every episode, everything you want to change, if you just go in there and keep hitting this refresh feed, it's a feature that if abused, they're going to actually take away. Uh, from us is that right todd do we have let's let's check todd's audio again all right so crossing my fingers here i'm off the headset is that better it's better no. we can hear you at least so i i was every time todd was speaking all i could imagine myself is inside audition with enveloping and just <laughs> a post-production nightmare it's like yeah. 50 50 with that headset but anyway yeah. um we've heard nothing from apple on this um uh, you know, I don't think that the Apple team has a lot of control over the dev team. I think <laughs> they kind of, I think they kind of get stuff as it's thrown at them, um, because you know they had not really good answers for us on the uh, changes that were made to explicit and clean, and there's still some unanswered questions there. So, you know, that's a whole nother topic. But uh, yeah, no, nothing from the Apple team so far on that. Cool. So again. In theory, this lets you update your podcast like now, right, Daniel? In theory, yeah. But I would say only use this if you suspect a problem 
Like yeah, I was going to say, why would you use this? Like, other than being very impatient. Yeah, basically, if you've already waited 24 hours, press this button, wait another 24 hours. Don't sit there pressing it over and over and over. It does not detect your impatience and move things along more quickly. <laughs> this reminds me, because they in FeedBurner, it's, there was language about a nuke option, right? Yeah. Like, you could you could basically almost refresh using it, and they made it sound very scary. What else do we get? You can hide or delete a podcast. Which was always something, well, you could hide with a tag if you had access to put in those tags, right? It, it, there is an iTunes tag for hiding. I've done it before I had access to this. Well, um, now that might be a great question on Todd's side. So does the hide in iTunes, uh, that tag you insert in your RSS feed, or maybe we need Angela, but does that tag do the same thing as clicking hide here in Podcast Connect? I've never had to hide a podcast from iTunes. Uh, that would be an Angel question, but keep okay. on saying Podcast Connect because I'm getting a lot of traffic to <laughs> a website that uh, no one knew about. <laughs> you it was weird. Your audio like was like really good, and then it it's like a it's like a compressor like lowered the. That was really weird. I don't know. You <laughs> covered up their head. Anyways, so we don't know. I mean, I've done it before, putting in a tag, um, but it's it should in theory it's the same thing. Whereas you just don't want that podcast. You don't want it removed from iTunes in the case of the hide, but you want it to not be searchable and seen and found, right? Right, but I, you know, I, I should look at the specs while I'm saying this, but something else that I've wondered is if you add a particular tag into your RSS feed, I wondered if that even prevents iTunes from downloading episodes at all. Like even if someone directly subscribes to your RSS feed manually, does that prevent it? But I'm, I'm looking up the specs right now. Anyways, not a, not a huge feature. It's there. And if you want to delete your podcast, you can. I, I couldn't clear out the deleted podcast that was already there. But what was the process? If you wanted to get rid of a podcast before, it, this just puts it into our hands a little bit more. What's the deal with that? Yeah, that's the nice thing is that before what you had to do is you had to report an issue on a podcast and then request mm -hmm. it to be removed. And what was dangerous about that is anyone could do that. Right, and uh, I have heard of some competitors getting their po their competitors' podcast removed uh, wow. from iTunes due to something like that. Like they rallied enough people, some really horrible, nasty, unethical stuff. But what this does is it gives the person who submitted the feed the control to remove the podcast from yeah, iTunes, which is yeah, How brilliant. <laughs> which which can lead to some problems that have already happened where ex co host who submitted the feed have actually disgruntedly went into this new podcast connect and deleted shows. Yikes. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to avoid all the potential problems of nasty people. A certain uh, people will find a way to, to screw you over if they, yeah. <laughs> they can. So, but it does give more control to the person who should have it in the majority of cases. Now, I've looked what? up the um, the iTunes block RSS thing yeah. since we mentioned that. I want to clarify that. Uh, that does block it from appearing in the iTunes podcast directory. That's what it says on the website. And it can apply to the overall podcast RSS feed. So your whole podcast is prevented from appearing in the iTunes store. Or an individual episode. I didn't realize this before. You can block an individual episode from going into iTunes. And they say, for example, you might want to block a specific episode Split if you know it that its content would otherwise cause the entire podcast to be removed from the iTunes store. Right. So if you've got the title of an episode that you just absolutely have to have that profanity in the title, then you could block that one episode from appearing in the iTunes store. All of your subscribers would still receive that episode, but you wouldn't get kicked out of iTunes for violating the no profanity in written text rule. Yeah, and my advice would be just take it out of the title because I don't know if I trust it and, you know, whatever. But it's there. There is there is the ability to do that uh, more so with your tags, with the block tag than, than what you're going to get inside Podcasts Connect, <laughs> iTunes Connect. If you go to iTunesConnect.com, I'm assuming you'll go to the same place. Um, not, to, not to spoil it for Todd and his, and his website. <laughs> but, you know, podcastsconnect.com. Oh, iTunesConnect.com actually doesn't go anywhere, but podcastsconnect.com 
does redirect to their store. And that domain has been registered since July 2015. So if they've been planning this, if they've been working on this, they did it before the Google Podcast portal was available. Mm. And yeah. if Apple's listening, you can buy my domain for a lot of money. Uh huh. <laughs> They're gonna want it. How could they not want it? I mean, one of the one of great one of the great tips for podcasters when you have your domain name is to go buy the common misspelling, right? Like the, uh, and I guarantee a lot of people are dropping that s. So. All right, what else? Your list there. Uh, and you're looking at it. I'm asking because you, yeah. you've got it there. The, um, you can view an iTunes store. Now, there is something interesting here, Mirror URL. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. We haven't even talked about that together. Sometimes we chat offline. Well, I guess it's online. You get what I mean. <laughs> Off the record. And uh, yeah, the Mirror URL is a really, I mean, it, it kind of seems like a feed burner, right? In that it, it, having that wall between you want to explain a little bit and then we can discuss. Yeah, this I don't is know something if anyone knows so new. much. <laughs> uh, their, their little question mark next to it says, I quote, a permanent link to your RSS feed URL. Users subscribe to your podcast using the mirror URL are redirected to your RSS feed URL in podcast app and iTunes. This allows you to change your RSS feed URL without losing subscribers without losing users subscribe to your mirror URL. So this confuses Todd, things. Yeah, Todd, what's with the thumbs up there? It basically allows you to have a like a ghost URL. Does it? That's because my understanding. If you give that URL, how are you Where's that URL take you? Have you yeah, ever put that URL? That, put in your mirror URL. It is a 301. Sure. Well, let me look at this uh, to actually see the actual information. But it does redirect to the RSS feed. And let me, I'm doing a geeky curl with the header request information to find this out. Um, ah. It's, uh, what is it doing? It is redirecting to your RSS feed looking to see is it a 301 redirect or is it a temporary like a 307 or a 302 which is i know we're getting uber geeky here but someone out there wants to know acquiring minds want to know definitely and let's see i'm trying to see here that's the rss feed i'm trying to see what other while you're looking at that some of the other features yeah the uh, thing that that's the strangest thing about it to me so it's like a pcr.apple.com url and then the Last part of it is the ID for your podcast, which is part of your podcast, regular podcast URL anyway. Um, so I assume PCR stands for podcast redirect. That's going to be a guess on my part. And it redirects to your RSS feed. So it seems like this is kind of the bare bones feed burner idea where right. you have a feed URL that you can easily change where the original source is coming from but so do you think if you are a new show don't do this for your old show because some people have the mirror url and other people won't so if it's brand new never submitted never given it to anybody you give maybe on your website or wherever you give your url to your to subscribe to your show in itunes if you give the mirror in theory i can act now i can do an a, a url rss change on my own and iTunes is always seeing just the mirror URL, which then looks at whatever I'm using, right? In theory, yes. this is for, I don't use it yet. I'm but, saying. <laughs> okay, it's a 302 redirect. Well, so that's explain on, what that means to us. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That, that's when I looked up HTTP, not HTTPS. But um, yeah, I'm having some troubles trying to figure out exactly what redirect it's right. The thing that concerns me is this makes it sound like you can change your feed URL and it, uh, it uh, properly affect all of right. your iTunes subscribers. So it makes me you wonder, start, that way. start that way. Well, you don't get this URL until you've submitted a feed to iTunes. Sure. But what I'm saying is I could do this now. I could start handing this URL out now thinking, oh, yay, I'll start handing out a mirror URL because in the in two years I'm going to change. But there's a lot of people who 
Right. So you're, or, saying, well, you're saying if I you submit if, to iTunes first, and then you yeah. use this mirror URL to submit to Google, Stitcher, all of those other places. But what is iTunes then looking at? But the, th the thing is, has iTunes always been using them as mirror URLs, right? Is this... No, Todd shakes his head no. I would say stay away from this right now. <laughs> like, don't get, don't get crafty with this one. It's an interesting thing. It's new to me. It's, it seems new to most people. It does make me wonder, is Apple going to make it so that when someone subscribes to a podcast in iTunes, they're now subscribed to this mirror URL instead? Sure. And how long have they, how long has that existed? It's not like, it, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, and it's, is that actually... It's, it's new to us, so we're, See, you know, we yeah. haven't done experiments on it yet. Yeah. We'll wait. Follow a uh, new media show. Audacity to podcast podcasters round table <laughs> like updates to come and then that's what i said some of this this all really seems to be in flux uh right todd i mean i think that they're still tweaking on yeah. this stuff well and it's been changing you know it's like the redirects have been changing i didn't even know this additional new url would actually redirect that was new to me when you guys start talking about it today and it explains why i'm getting so much traffic to my website so it's you know it's it's, it's very odd and uh, who knows, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, this wasn't, they did some other changes at the very same time that they introduced this too. So, you know, image size requirements have went up to 3000 by 3000. Right. You know, I did know uh, in terms, if you want to be, I, it looked like if you want to be featured, it needs to be 3000, not necessarily, I mean, it's right. still, still minimum 1400, 1400, right? You won't, you won't screw up your show by not having 3000, but you won't, Sounds like it won't be featured. I think they want you to push to 3,000. That's the yeah. implications we're hearing. Yeah. All right. Well, we're kind of wrapping up. I did mention there is a, the other change has been a support site. What's the URL? So I don't get that wrong, Daniel, for the support site. It's, I have it on my website. You know what? Really the best thing to do now is podcastsconnect.com or podcastsconnect.apple.com or whatever the, <laughs> the URL is. <laughs> um, but go there, it's .apple.com, um, because that will have a spot probably that links you to help. Support.itunespodcast.com yeah, is the one I'm actually yeah. talking about. But yes, you can go there and get as a jumping off point to all that stuff. And if you go, and to, that that, is, uh, yeah. if you go to that Podcast Connect page, down at the very bottom, there's a really handy link that is help and resources. And they've completely changed the information and reorganized and enhanced the information that they give to podcasters. So there's no longer just a single page that shows you everything, but they have great information, uh, some updated information. It's easier to consume, browse through some tips and guides. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, they're pumping it up, right? They're putting some extra support and, and giving podcasts some love in terms of access and websites and control and information so all that's very cool. We don't, you're not getting stats. Um, we can briefly talk about what do you think it all means, if anything, for the future. Uh, it looks Todd might be frozen. Yep, he's gone. You know, I heard, I believe, um, I've heard speculation that it, it could be some uh, future laying out of a platform for like iAds or something, right? Uh, so an advertising what revenue model for podcast, but I mean, all speculation. So what's your yeah. speculation? Daniel? It's no inside information. I think, yeah, no, I do not know insider information know. on that. So there's that disclosure. Um, I do have access to stats from iTunes because I, my network is a partner with iTunes. Right. Yes. And so I get to see stats from iTunes only and from the podcast right. app. And I've got that too. It's a network page. It's yeah. special access. I Hopefully that'll wonder. be ported over. Yeah, this seems to lay the groundwork because iTunes Connect for developers gives them stats about their apps. Yeah. Um, so pod, Apple has that information. They do track it. They're just not sharing it yet with everybody yet. So I think in maybe in 2016, maybe not until 2017, we might see some stats from iTunes for our own podcast. And that could be really cool. Right. So let's hope, let's hope that's coming because we have, it does exist and they have given it to some people, um, different groups of people. So 
And I may be coming in. Some of those stats are you can see like who's how many subscribers have pressed subscribe in iTunes over a certain amount of time. And what are some of the other things you can see? Um, uh, you can see how many people this is in the partner portal. You can see how is, many people yeah. browse to your iTunes listing. Right. New downloads, subscriptions. Yeah. Can't see and, ratings and, and reviews, but you can get those from mypodcastreviews.com. Right. Exactly. And so, you know, that's some of the stuff that may come. I, I don't want to, people might be wondering, ooh, what stats might be coming? So he gives a, a plug and then he slowly lifts his coffee mug with this logo on it. So <laughs> I was just Daniel, thinking, I need a logo Brian with Master. my other products uh-huh. and services. Yes. I'm going to put sticker on my, I'm going to put a podcast around table sticker right here on my head. Of course, you're already watching. So I guess the pod, the podcasters studio. So it looks like Todd is out of here. He probably had to go pick up his kids, which is cool. And I'm going to head out too, as I go to my daughter's first little league practice. So exciting stuff here in California. It's still daylight. So I'm going to catch some of that, but the mosquitoes are out. So that doesn't sound fun. So go to podcastersroundtable.com. Uh, slash guest, sign up to be on the list. And as we roll out here, uh, just a quick summary. What has changed? What do podcasters, what should they, what should they know about the change? And I guess it's, you know, basically you've got this new podcast connect. I mean, the way we have to say it is just ridiculous. Like that something's gonna have to change there. Todd's gonna have to get paid or something. So I can just say podcastconnect.com. Cause look at when you say it, I have this problem on my own show, but I've got the alternate domain, so I don't have to worry about go to the podcaster studio, still get there. So yeah, th- if the submission process has changed, um, that's different, right, Daniel? Yeah, and you now have more control to do things with your podcast as it is in iTunes without needing Apple's help. Yeah, be careful. Uh, see the front end if you're catching this live. Uh, go to the uh, the archive, podcastroundtable.com. And just go there because it doesn't have an episode number. This isn't going to be a round. But we will catch you on the next round, which I believe is round 67. We don't always do this on Blab. If I have less than basically four people, I can do it on Blab. But a lot of times the round table is more. We have we have three co-hosts here. So <laughs> it leaves us with one seat. So didn't get to all the questions. It's a shorter format today. But Daniel, thanks for joining us. Todd, thanks for joining us if you hear this part. And uh, great information. If you guys have questions, definitely. I mean, you can follow Daniel right here. For He's at Daniel J. Lewis. Is it? Oh, wait a minute. Is that? That's not your Twitter name. No. Okay. So it's just how black. I don't know what's going on. I, Mine says podcast. Special forward. request. Oh, I was like, look at this. We're making a lot of little discoveries here. And I was like, that's not, that's not right. So can I, is it, does that exist at Daniel J. Lewis? I desperately want Daniel J. Lewis on Twitter. But so you're sending people to like, you're showing it, but there's nothing on, there. On Blab, my account <laughs> okay. is Daniel J. Lewis. On, All right. the, on Twitter, I'm still the ramen noodle. Right. Well, okay. We can see me up there at Podcast Helper. That's me on Twitter. Ask questions, get in touch. We will see you next time. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Daniel, wave and I'll wave. See ya. <laughs>